All right, listen up. Optometrists are raising concerns that rates of nearsightedness are increasing in children. Uh, joining us now to discuss the vision condition and how to protect your children's eyesight from worsening is Dr. Timothy Sang. Thank you for being here this morning. Now, I'm someone uh, with short sightedness or myopia, uh, but a lot of people, maybe you have kids and you're starting to discover that maybe they might have nearsighted. What is, what is myopia? How does it ha happen? Uh, you know, especially if, if you're starting to deal with that in a family situation. Right, Bill. So uh, myopia, as you mentioned, uh, commonly referred to as nearsightedness, is when uh, the individual has the ability to see objects at near clearly, but objects at a distance can appear blurred. And so we know it develops in childhood and can progress into adulthood. Um, its prevalence and severity is unfortunately on the rise. Uh, but there's a big component to this that's not just vision. As the eye is becoming more nearsighted, it's actually physically growing and stretching out. And that could put people at risk of future eye problems um, later on in life. Yeah, it's interesting to think about the actual construct of the eye and how it is literally being stretched out. Why do you think we're getting uh, an increase in prevalence of myopia? I mean, it, it seemed to be around when I was a kid. A few of us in, in class at school, but the numbers are really pointing to this becoming an increasing um, prevalence. In right. Right. And so um, the. There are components to this, uh, the genetic family history, as we know of, and so um, th that goes along the lines of if one parent or both parents are nearsighted, there's more likelihood that their kids will be nearsighted. But there's another component where even if neither parent is nearsighted, you could have up to a one in four or 25% chance of the child becoming nearsighted. Yeah. So what is that component? Well, environmental, uh, lifestyle habits, and that's changed over the years drastically. So uh, we know insufficient time spent outdoors, um, especially in North America. Um, we know um, increased near visual demand activities, whether that's reading for academics or recreation, and certainly the introduction of digital devices Tablets. up close, yes, um, at earlier ages than probably their parents or previous generations were introduced to. And so what I can share with you, Bill, is that the current rate of myopia worldwide sits around 30 to 34%. We're close to 42% in Canada. Wow. And um, one of the landmark studies in the past decade uh, projects that by the year 2050, so in about 26 years, half the world will need glasses and about 10% of them will be highly myopic, which is the one that puts patients at risk of um, uh, sight-threatening conditions. Wow. That's about five billion people um, in the world on average will need glasses in 26 years. So that's why when I was a kid, you know, they'd put glasses on you and I tried contacts back in the 80s they were a little different than they were now in terms right. of cleaning them and everything else. Um, but I thought it was just something that you would just correct. But there are actually, uh, this is shocking that there, there are treatment uh, that can actually slow down the elongation of the eye? How, do, how does that work? Why is it important to look at treatment options? That's a great question. And um, there are. We, we have better equipment um, diagnostics to kind of predict, track, and treat myopia better than ever before. And uh, one of those is uh, Cooper Vision's MySight contact lens. So this is a, a, a seven-year study that um, has both Health Canada and FDA approval for not just correcting vision, but slowing down progression. And um, those studies showed that that contact lens might be able to show slow uh, progression by about 59%. Um, and that's a very clinically significant high amount. I think for you and I, or those who um, might need contacts or glasses, yeah. uh, if we could slow down the risk of progression with minimal side effect by uh, over 50%, we take those odds any day. So, so how does that work? Because I remember my mom back, back in the 60s, where she had hard contacts, and apparently those would actually hold the shape of your eye, but I'm, I'm guessing this is different. because. Yeah, so this one is a soft daily contact lenses, and um, what you're alluding to is uh, there are hard lenses that you can sleep in that reshape the coordinate to hold it, um, uh, the shape of the eye, uh, or slow down progression. And the whole idea is to um, slow down that lengthening of the eye, as you had mentioned, uh, which is highly associated with myopic progression or, or the nearsighted prescription getting higher and higher. Uh, but these ones are obviously a lot more comfortable. I think. <laughs> my mom didn't always love those, but we, we've turned a corner. What, and what are they called again? They're, they're the MySight contact lenses. Okay. And yes, they are much more comfortable um, as far as the daily lenses um, are concerned. Um, they're daily disposable, so they kind of take away the uh, issue of having to clean them, especially for uh, uh, adolescents and, and, and um, pediatric populations. And where do people just quickly find out more information on their own? Yeah, so I would say your local optometrist uh, probably has quite a lot of information on myopic control 
options nowadays. It is a growing field. Uh, Cooper Vision and Myopia Profile, as well as the International Myopia Institute, they have a lot of information and research that's evidence-based, awesome. um, that's both patient-centric as well as practitioner-relevant. Dr. Timothy Thanks, thank you. Thank you so much thank for being for here today. Uh, learning, always learning a lot.